got some more parts to work on the car. Um, I'm just gonna work on it slowly over time. Uh, today, I just say could replace a boot that had tape on it. Maybe I'll replace the fuel filter if the lines are really bad, um, but it's gonna get pretty messy for sure. Um, I got the rear pitman arms. Right here, I'll probably replace that today. And I have the rear sway bar end links, which I'll probably do another day because it takes a long time. I'll do the air filter. And that might be it for today. on both sides this side doesn't look too bad I feel like they might have done that just to make it look like this side was supposed to be there um, but yeah luckily I have a new one there we go uh, new parts in all the parts out now on to the pitman arms with the wheel off you can see how bad or it's not too bad but the rotor is pretty done you should change those the rear shocks i think i do need to change it um it looks like it's time but you can see the lowering springs here and the rear sway bar end link is totally bad and these are totally bad these are 22 millimeters i think this one's just a through bolt this one is a bolt and nut and i had to use a long breaker bar to get these these are pretty tight Okay, got it out. Here's the old part. Obviously really worn out. I wonder if I'll feel the difference, but I should. I was looking at the fuel filter. It looked good, fuel lines look good. And you see that it was done at 163,000 miles. I'm about at 168 according to the odometer, but above it, there's a date that said it was done December of 2017, so pretty much 2018. It's been a couple of years, and obviously that means this car hasn't been run that much since then. So I'm not gonna change this fuel this fuel filter just yet, but this does make me kind of concerned about uh, the head gasket of this car and all the other uh, rubber components, just because if a car is left without running for a long while, then the gaskets tend to deteriorate from what I know, but hopefully this car was just driven regular, regularly, like a little bit every so often. It's a new day, I mean, it's the next day, and I'm gonna do what, all the stuff I can, I have some more time. I'm probably gonna do the rear, rear sway bar end links and maybe call it a day for that. I've done a couple of these style sway bar end links on the rear a couple of times throughout my my short life and my plan of attack is just to take off the whole sway bar um, with the end links together and work on it from there because I find that to be the easiest way because these might be easy to come off but really hard to get back on anyways. This will just come out. Um, I need to somehow shift it in a way and then come out once come out one side. And now you pretty much just pull this off. As you can see, compared to the new one, these are pretty cracked and worn out. This is gonna be the hardest part. You see the hole has gotten bigger over time. 
That's why it was easy to come off. Comes that in. A lot harder to get in. So I think so. Grace, I'm gonna clean up these as well. I'm not sure if there's a certain direction it goes in, but this part of the hole compared to this looks smaller. So I think I'm gonna use this side to get it into the sway bar and link. To do that, I'll probably try this first. Some white with the grease. If that doesn't work, maybe I'll try some plain grease. Uh, we'll see. My God. Got it on. This took significantly less time. I think the secret is definitely to use some sort of grease, but also just lay it down or push it down from here and turn it in a clockwise um, direction as if you're screwing it on. Back into position. I'm gonna put the sway bar on first before the end links. 